Hello fellow unorthodox, welcome back to my stream and uploads of videos of fun stuff, hunting, gameplay, for let's plays, and tech streams. Right now we're doing a tech stream, this is my IRL type stuff, creative, you name it. Uh, we're going to be doing a Nintendo 64 controller. Uh, I set this up so everyone can watch this, uh, I can speak with you and you can watch what I'm doing over here. Uh, so I'm going to break down a little bit of what I can recommend uh, for doing a repair on one of these controllers and what you'll need. Now uh, let's see if I can get this all together at the moment to help people out. So bear with me. Okay, thank you for your patience. I had to do a request for someone. Someone wanted me to have my uh, account linked. I still kept putting that off. Finally get it done. Hey, Kate, welcome to the stream. I'm going to be doing the Nintendo 64 con uh, controller rebuild and kind of putting everything together now. So, at the moment, getting everything together in terms of what I can recommend for anyone to do this type of stuff. Um, first, of course, you need your controller. And I'll show you the telltale signs of what you can expect of when you know you need a rebuild for one of these. And so this one's the greatest example is this guy right here. Uh, this stick, as you can see, it is literally just flopping around in its cradle, uh, which is also called the bowl. And I can show you that part looks like this here. This is a fresh brand new bowl. And this is where the gears sit, as well as the control stick rocks around in. And it works like a mortar and pestle. Uh, hey Kate, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm very happy today. Today's been an awesome day. Um, you just missed my other stream before. I was uh, very excited as I found an NES Mini today f and I paid next to nothing for it thanks to all my, my savvy, thrifty hunting and whatnot. Um, I'll go over that in a moment as I'm doing this. Um, but without further ado, um, what I can recommend for anyone who has a Nintendo 64 controller, I always recommend doing a rebuild on the control sticks because the control sticks are mechanical, okay? And they have uh, specific uh, parameters and sensitivity that work really, really well with how they're designed. If you replace them with the digital ones, which are pretty common in the aftermarket now, they are extremely sensitive. So when you're playing um, racing games or shooting games, or you're trying to tiptoe uh, as a character with a digital stick, uh, it can have a, some repercussions. Uh, so if you have the classic mechanical sticks, they work to their intentions. Um, a great example of a game is because of the way the mechanical rocks back and flicks, um, games like Pokemon Stadium, like if you're flicking like the Ekans or anything like that, um, the sensitivity matters. Uh, so having your classic uh, controllers with the mechanical over the digital replacements is a big deal. Uh, for the best authentic experience and I kind of curious that actually brings up a curiosity thing when they do the Nintendo 64 mini if they do where it's all speculation still even though the the patents have been filed for the console and the controllers uh, will they bring back the mechanical stick or will they go forward with a uh, digital stick so that's a good thing to think about um, this is a very weird controller when it comes to generations um, but anyways to get these parts to do the rebuild uh, the site that I get them from, uh, they're in, located in the States. Uh, it's, I believe it's Kitsch Bent, and they are extremely cheap. Uh, like, this stick is a buck. This is one dollar. Um, the gear set is like, I think they're like 50 cents or something like that, or a dollar. And I think it's like the same thing for like the bowl. It's like a dollar. Um, to, that's, these parts are, cost nothing to rebuild. You're probably spending about that much in shipping just to get that. So I, I bought them in bulk. I bought like a pack of 10. Um, so like a pack of 10 plus shipping. I think everything was like either like 20 or 30 bucks uh, to rebuild a whole bunch because I was rebuilding my own as well as some for bundles to sell. Uh, that way when I sell a console, it has a fresh rebuilt controller. Uh, so what you need, so when you get your gear set, you got uh, your new stick, uh, you get new bowl. You're going to want all those together. It makes it the whole fresh experience, and they're really cheap. Uh, you're going to need, of course, your controller with the bust stick. We're not going to use these. Those are just examples of bad sticks. Uh, precision screwdriver sets work the well, uh, the best. Uh, I have my trusty uh, cobalt set, so 
surprisingly, the 64 controller uses a Phillips, not a Tri-Wing. That's really weird, oddball thing, but um, they use Phillips. I don't understand how that got away with the Nintendo, but it does. So don't need to try. You don't need a special screwdriver. Um, what I do recommend is files. So I have these old weird Asian file sets. They're precision files. Don't use big files. Use precision files. But I have one um, that's more like a needle. This is rounded, and I'll show you why in a bit. And then a flat one. Okay, this is like a flat plane one, and that's for long strokes of uh, sanding. So. I'll explain that in a little bit when we start doing the rebuild process of why you need those. So that's all you need for all of this, pretty much, uh, is just two files and a Phillips, and you can get this thing back up and functional again. Now, the majority part of the controller is just a ton of Phillips screws in the back. There are, what was it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's two of them in the controller pack well, so don't forget those, otherwise they'll break your controller trying to force it apart. So we gotta do a little bit of tedious work in unscrewing all this. And I've done how many I've done for these? I've done seven of these guys already. So I have pretty good head on of what needs to be done in repetition and whatnot. And unfortunately I had a couple controllers that had some broken insides, but they fixed up just fine. So it's a good thing I fixed stuff because they got better homes now. We got these little now these two little ones in the yeah I've done seven already um, I have what, three three control sticks left because I have the two extra ones over here and then I have this one right here so those ones will, will be rebuilt and so if I find a controller when I'm out doing my Google hunting and whatnot uh, I can just slap it in and it'll be quick and easy ready to go or I'll just save save, save it for myself because I'm kind of at the point where if I see a color I don't have I'm collecting them because I love the Nintendo 64 that much. And so, like, I already have uh, ice blue, green, gray, uh, atomic purple, and what else do I have? I'm trying to get all the colors. Um, and I think yellow. I think yellow. I'm not sure. i got to see what I have. I totally forgot at this point. Oh, I have, I think I have red. Yeah, that, that was it. Not yellow. I have red. Um, I used to have an atomic or the watermelon red, and unfortunately I got rid of that when I got did a barter with someone. Kind of wish I got it back, but I'll find one. Okay, so now that we split the shell apart after taking all the screws out, uh, be careful you, your bumpers might fall off. They just pop right back in, so it's no big deal. But you can pretty much leave all this together, except for I'm not a crazy person. I love games. Um, the the Z button chills on top of the back of the control stick. Okay, uh, the control, the Z button pops right off the back of the control stick with just a little bit of maneuvering. Put it right out of the way, so that way the stick is exposed. Uh, so before you take out the screws here, the three screws that hold this cradle in, you're gonna want to unplug the control stick from the board. That's much easier when it's still plugged in. Uh, hey, Hado, welcome to the stream. We're in the process of doing a rebuild on this. If there's anything important that you remiss, uh, yes, remiss. <laughs> if there's anything that's important that you missed, uh, I'll be re uh, airing this episode in a little bit for people to watch. Okay. But if you have any questions or if you just hear the chilling, feel free to pop in. And I'll help you out the best I can. Or just enjoy the stream. So now we have the three screws out of the way, we can take out, now this look familiar? It's one of those guys. This can come out and you can leave the controller off to the side. Because most of the time, almost everything on the 64 controller, it always works unless someone really beat the crap out of it. But these things live up to the name of, I would say, Nintendium, as people like to call them. It's just this stick that goes bad. And as you can see, it rocks around. It just does that. I've had, of course, I've had worse ones where they really 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 rock around but nonetheless they need to be re rebuilt so this is a little bit of uh, trickiness because it's spring loaded so I'll show you a nice way to work on everything it has one screw 
that keeps everything from exploding. Literally, one screw. So you take out that one weird screw. So now we have a couple different screws that have to be separated. The majority stack right here, which is what holds the uh, controller together. We have two long black ones that are in the controller pack well. We have three of them that are silver. Should be almost all silver. Uh, years may vary. Uh, for the control stick in the controller. And one weird one that's kind of like the controller pack well. It's one weird one that keeps this from exploding. So now this is under pressure. You're going to see it's going to start to push apart. That's the spring for the me mechanism. So while keeping it under pressure still, you're going to want to take your nail and separate the back part. Because right back here, these these slotted tabs, and they lock in with a little tooth there. So as you start to separate them, it's going to want to come apart. So work one at each side. Try not to break it, and then it'll start to separate, and then it'll lift off. And then literally you just lift it off. And I'll show you the mechanism. It looks more complicated than it is, uh, which keeps it all together. So we can set that bad boy off to the side. This is the little brain board in here. This lifts out. So this little guy can go off to the side. Don't lose it, don't break it. And now we got all the mechanical stuff that we need to clean and replace what's worn out. So it pops right out. So you're gonna reuse this base. This is your cradle that's gonna hold the bowl. So don't mix up your old parts with the new parts. You don't wanna put old parts back in unless they're the ones you want to keep. So on the bowl, now that I just dropped, uh, this is one of the gear sets. Uh, one of the gear sets here, uh, let's see, this is the sideways gear set. Okay, uh, it chills in there like this. Now this is the, let's see, this is towards the back, towards the electronic board. This side over here is for the side. Now why does this matter is the fact that the there's two different size gear sets. Uh, this you'll see is the really wide one. This is the old one by the way. So we have a replacement wide one that looks like this. And you'll see it's just like the same way. The upper one is smaller and you'll see it like that. See the, di the actual size of the hole is much smaller. That's an easy way to remember them is the small one is up top because it holds the control stick. It actually grabs onto the bottom of the control stick and keeps it in place. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to do a heart transplant. So toss the old gear set to the side. Don't need those anymore. So we need to reuse these little gears that spin. But before we transfer them, this is where one of the files comes into play. Everything on here on these is a little bit casted over just a tad. Uh, so the gears won't spin perfectly. So what I do is I take it. It's kind of like a square file It's a precision square file long you could probably get away with a rounded one But I'll put it in and I'll just spin it around in it To kind of like scuff up the hole Because it may not be smooth enough Just give it a nice little spin you Go to the next one and do the same thing again It's kind of like bored out just a tiny bit just scuff it up because the, the casting on it might uh, hang up the uh, the new part. I've actually had ones that they didn't spin at all. They were so stuck in there. So, of course I dropped it. Um, we are going to transplant gears over now. And the best way to do that, you're gonna lift at the arm and push up out of it. Because it's kind of like a little sliding slot, which is makes it pretty easy to work on that way. So you get the kind of like push the back part in, slide it down, and then just pop the little nub into the hole. And just like that, it fits in and it rotates. Now it slightly has some resistance, but it's gonna be really nice when it's all together because it's gonna be nice and smooth. But you do have to take these steps to make sure that you, uh, I would say, scuff up as much as possible because otherwise the overcasting can make everything bind and the stick will actually bind and get stuck in place, which kind of sucks. 
But um, here is a, an example you're going to notice in right here. All that white powder that just came out, that is grinded plastic out of this bowl because it acts like a mortar and pestle because it's a mechanical stick rubbing around in there and that's what causes it to get, the set, get so loose. Uh, it's literally wearing itself away mechanically. So that nice Nintendo cocaine there. Uh, am I going to be streaming this weekend? Ah, quite possibly. Quite possibly. I'm going to be trying to be streaming more. Um, but yeah, that's some Nintendo cocaine. Do not do it. It's a bad idea. You will not imbue the, the power of Mario. Um, but that is why this control stick wears out. So we're going to put our new gears in. Okay, nice and smooth. They fit in there nicely. They did a good job on this at Kitch Bent. Um, I'm not paid by them or anything. I just love their product. They did a good job. Every single one of them so far I've installed in seven controllers has been wonderful. Um, you just need to follow... Uh, a little bit of TLC in installing these. If you just pop them in, they will not work very nicely. You will have some complications. All right. So we take that bottom part, and now that we have those gears in there, uh, we have the one in the back, and we have the one on the side. So you'll see it's like this. It's pretty straightforward. It falls in, plugs right in, really nicely. You can't kind of mess that up. <laughs> you like that, right? Um, so now. We have this keyed control stick that wants to explode. It's under spring pressure, it's a big spring. So you wanna push down on the spring, unlock the, the keyway, all right, by taking the one black gear off. This is the small one, small gear. Small gear's upper. And now the spring can release and you take it out. So you remember, before this all comes apart, remember how this goes, there's a little plastic washer that is slotted that will sit on top of the spring. So the best thing to do is just take this, lift it off, and you put it off to the side because it's going to sit there. So now the control stick can come out and this thing is quite worn. It's reusable. I'm not going to lie, it's probably a little bit reusable, but the best effect is to get a new one because this little nub here is actually what's grinding away in the bowl. So it's not 100% reusable, but it is. So, I mean, for how cheap these are, literally the sticks are a dollar. Um, I would re recommend replacing them. But there might be some purists who want the gray stick because the replacement ones are clear. That's up to you. I'd rather have a functional stick in an authentic controller that's not gray, that's clear. The clear ones, I like them because I know that one has been rebuilt. That's why I like them. So I don't have a problem with it. So let's off, off that to the side. We have this small gear. Toss that. We don't want to get those mixed up with our new good parts. Now we have to rebuild the upper. But before that, this is one step I like to throw in there. Grab some cute sips. And we got to clean up this cocaine. Not the stuff that fell on the desk, but the actual module itself. Just get a little bit of alcohol on a Q-tip. And we're going to clean up all this because we don't really want it to gunk up the controller. And this takes just a moment to get it all out of there because this I had one that really, really was bad. Uh, it was filled with, like, Nintendo cocaine. It was so bad. The whole stick was the most wobbliest, worst stick ever. It looked like someone with... They only played Mario Party... And they kept just doing the rotating stick game until their hand was like some like they looked like something out of Fallout, and their control stick was just dust. I'm not even exaggerating, like it was really bad. You remember that uh, they made that glove for Mario Party because the kids were getting uh, rashes on their hands. Uh, my sister, she got hives from that. <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, yeah, those, the, those are the days of really beating the crap out of your hands, uh, playing some aggressive mini games. And you, you probably noticed like newer mini games, and whatnot. They don't involve like rotating the control stick furiously. They they rely mainly on the button mashing, just because they don't want a lawsuit again of kids getting hurt rotating the stick. I think those mini games with the rotating sticks were absolutely hilarious. But I'll give it to them now. They got the motion controls, so they can do like the wobbling stuff. Uh, so look forward to the new Mario Party when it comes out because we're 
we're big Mario Party uh, family people. But anyways, we're building a trailer or something, so. It just kind of goes hand in hand, because that's the reason why some of these really broke so bad. Alright, so we got this new clear stick with the nice, uh, the top part of the nub, which is going into the bowl, is not worn out. That's going to go in here. Everything's been cleaned. So, put it through. It does have a little bit of, like, a keyway, so it will sort of stay in. Sort of. So, we want to get the spring. Now, before we put the spring in, I'm going to put off this topper to the side. I do like to do a little stretching to it. Just a little. To give it some new strength again. Because if it's got too much slack, it doesn't really want to push against it too much. It doesn't work too, too well. Alright. So we're going to let that chill, like, right there. Because now this is the tedious part. This part might bore you a little bit. But we have to take the flat file, and we need to file a lot of edges on these gears. And I'm going to show you, that's that's the biggest thing about this video, is I'm going to show you what I do to make this work as best as possible. So start with the, we're going to work on the bottom gear, which has to drop into the bowl. So we need to sand, or uh, file at the side of it and just go a little bit at it don't put any force you're just basically sliding it over it and grinding off anything there you're gonna go at the bottom underneath it because you're gonna want to take off like casting lines and whatnot and anything that is unnecessary casting line or overcasting uh, will cause extra friction and these little spots are what are gonna make your control stick bind and the binding then ruins the performance and then you have a control stick that's actually I'll call it just as bad or worse because when you're going to play a game the control stick getting stuck will have a character walking in a direction or something of the sort that you didn't want them to do so this is really tedious but it's worth the money because this didn't cost much at all to do this is this is the labor so we're going to do the sides. Just kind of file down the, the edges. Okay. Now we also are going to file very carefully at the top of the hump. You're going to see the bridge here. They have some extra casting there. And we're going to do it very lightly just because there's a little bit of overcasting on it. <sighs> I just blew the Nintendo cocaine everywhere. Whoops. Oh well, I'm going to clean this up when I'm done anyway, because I, ex I expected this. Um, all right, so now that I got that done, I'm going to file at the inside slots just a little bit. Nothing crazy. And this is a lot. This was a lot of trial and error to figure out what really helped make this work the best. Because I had a couple of them, I had to reopen up because they were binding. Okay, and I also need to do there's some sections. You'll see in between the hump and the gear. Now you want to do just a little bit of filing. To make sure it's nice and smooth there because uh, it's pivoting on that when it sits in the bowl. So you want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Don't use excessive force on this because if you get a file that snags you may snap this. Yeah it's a really cheap part but you are shipping these so you don't have like a, a replacement right away um, unless you order in bulk. But that sucks because if you're down one gear, you're down one gear, you just ruin a set. They come in sets. so. And as you saw, there are two different sizes. Same ordeal on the other side. Uh, get in between the hump and the side part so that if there's any extra casting, then it will be filed out really carefully and won't catch extra friction. It'll run nice and smooth. And unfortunately, you have to do this for every gear. So when you're done with this, it'll be really worth it. So you'll start to understand as I'm explaining this, it is a little tedious. 
but the payoff is amazing. Uh, this one is just about done. Things should start to feel a little smoother on it. Less edgy. So I will take a Q-tip and clean it with some alcohol. If you have like a little bowl or something, you can just drop it in alcohol too or something like that. But I usually like to rub it just to make sure I get all the pieces off. Clean up the gear as much as possible. And then you'll have it ready to go to drop in. Now before you drop it in the bowl too, I recommend take a little bit of alcohol and clean the bowl. Make sure there's no sediments in there and the alcohol actually helps it work in. Or at least my experience, it worked really nicely whenever I added some alcohol in there. All right, so that's gonna run nice and smooth in there. Big one on the bottom. So that one's, that's done. And now we're just gonna work on the top. And once we're done with the top, we can put it all back together and then it's done. So you can see where this is like, it's not too, too bad. It's just a little tedious. You just need to know what you're doing. So now let's get the top one and same process. So start with the gear flat, kind of like sand away at the side. Do not get the teeth, need the teeth on the gear. So don't ruin the teeth. But you're just taking off extra casting. Ow, I just rubbed my nail. So, anyone who's watching, do you have any uh, recent games you are playing or uh, anything you are excited for from E3? Now, currently, myself, uh, what's what's the top of my list? Hmm. I think it's Smash Brothers, to be honest. I'm going to be completely basic as hell when it comes to that. Uh, I'm super stoked for Smash Brothers. Huge on Super Smash Brothers. But I also am kind of excited about the new Pokemon game. Because it's, I would give it, it's different. I don't know if I'm going to be disappointed in the uh, the lack of combat system with the wild battles, or if I'm going to like the change. So that's going to be an interesting thing to try. Um, then of course Mario Party, because I'm always the place to go through when it comes to meeting people and playing games at my place. Let's see, I don't remember. I didn't watch much of it, but the Steam Summer Sale. Ooh. I heard about that from my PC buddy that the Steam Summer Sale started. I have not got on it yet. I'm kind of scared to go check it out, but uh, I do like my niche Japanese games. Um, so I do want to go check out to see what they have for those because usually they don't put them on sale too much on, except for the Steam Summer Sale and the Winter Sale. So I hope there's some good ones in there that I want. Let's see. Genital jousting. I watched uh, someone play that. That was really funny to watch. I'd play that. Though I don't know how friendly that is to stream. I don't think I can stream that. I know I can I know I can put it on YouTube, but I don't think I'm allowed to put that on Twitch. <laughs> you bought so many. Is it that cheap? Or are you just talking about so many games in general? It's only $3.50. Oh, wow. That's not bad. Yeah, I had a feeling I couldn't stream it. Totally understandable, though. Uh, I hope they have some more multiplayer games in there. Like, uh... does that one? Beast Gang. Gang Beast or whatever it's called? kind of want to... I kind of want to play that. I've watched someone play that before. That looks like a lot of fun. But yeah, um, 
back onto this gear real quick uh, before I get too set off. Uh, the process that I explained you for is exactly the same uh, as sanding away. They're almost identical in terms of gears. Uh, the only thing that's different is the keyway on this one is smaller and the other one has a much bigger area. So same process, just tedious, time consuming, filing down and making sure everything's nice and smooth on the edges. And then everything will flow nice and smooth. And it's pretty easy to catch if it has a problem before you even uh, put the controller back together, which is a good, good thing. Let's see, I'm ready to get my PC already. Uh, are you going to be building a computer? That's exciting. Got a little bit more to get. I think it's all done. Let's see. All right. Oof. All right. Now let's clean up. Ah, you're building it yourself too. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I'm at a level where I'm comfortable with my computer for a while. Because uh, I found out I can keep my current graphics card for a while. Uh, that it is compatible with VR. It's not the top of the line for it. Cause, uh, but it is the, the bottom available that is powerful enough to run uh, VR. Uh, I am... I would say eventually, uh, as money permits, uh, looking into an Oculus Rift setup for Steam VR. So I think that would be a really fun experience because I do have the room to do it in this apartment because uh, I can always do it uh, in, in here even. Even my, even my bedroom has enough room. But um, I, uh, I can always do it in my living room. And I think I want to go Oculus Rift and not the PlayStation route because it just seems like the smarter idea to get one for the computer because there's more doors open for VR than on a console because console I would say for VR is extremely niche and then it's very controlled by who makes stuff for it and that's there's not much market for that while you, there's almost infinite for computer Yeah, literally the the unit, the Oculus Rift, and the controllers and stuff like that is four hundred bucks, and uh, there's a lot of other things I'd rather buy with four hundred dollars or important things that I have to spend money on with bills and whatnot, than get a VR set up. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm probably going to be smart about it, and I'm trying to find someone who has a used setup that's in good condition, and either get it really cheap or barter with them. Alright, so before I go putting this together while I'm talking and forgetting about it. <laughs> um, Alright, so we have the upper part. This is the upper. Uh, with the control stick in there. And we have the spring sitting in there. Right back where it's supposed to be. And with the washer there. Uh, See, so what, what you want to do is hold it together. With, try to do it with one hand. And you're going to take the gear that you just filed down. And cleaned up with alcohol. And I slide it over with the gear facing, I would say technically down, but even though it's facing up, well, that's the bottom of it, and put it over the bottom of the control stick and rotate it so it locks in place. And you'll see it holds the control stick in. It's going to sit in the cradle there. The spring's going to want to keep it taut in place and have the gear. So this flat part is technically the back of the control stick. So have the gear towards the back and then line it up straight with it. That's the easiest way to remember when you're working on it. Because when you go to drop this in, uh, that will be the back part. Now, when you go to put this back together, don't forget to put the board back in. Otherwise, there's no point in having this. But uh, I've done one, one, one set of my seven, and it made me laugh. But uh, put the board back in. It just drops right in like that. That's the coolest part about that. It literally just drops in. So you'll see here. We have the big stick is chilling, or the big big gear is chilling in there, and we can just drop this right on top. Just go straight down at it if you can. And 
and you're gonna feel the spring fight you. So what you wanna do is just make sure it's level as much as possible. And we have some malfunction. So that's why this is a little bit of trial and error when you're doing something with mechanical. So we need to find out where the stick is moving. Try again. Because you want to drop it straight into the gear at the bottom. It has to line up. Otherwise it won't work. Because you'll see that that bottom part of the control stick, it has to drop in the cradle, that little slot right there, has to drop in that gear. There she goes. All right, so now we have it all together. You're gonna feel the spring wanna fight you. Well, pinch it to hold it together and rotate the stick and see if she returns to center. Check every direction when you're doing this. If it binds at all, you need to take it apart and you need to uh, file some more. But you see where the control stick is now returning to center. So the spring's working, everything's running smooth in there and it's returning to center. That means it's all functioning. So now is the part where pinch it together, take that one black screw, the one individual one that was meant for keeping it together, and you're gonna pop that bad boy back in and keep this shut. And after you finish all of this, this is all that, all done after that, which is really cool. And now it's just reassembly. So now we have a nice rebuilt control stick, and it, I can't even explain it. Like you, you can't see this enough of a comparison uh, unless you do this yourself but when you go to here and you feel how destroyed this stick is like you could when you can rock it around in your hand without touching it and then you go and use a fresh one that's a nice rebuilt one like look at the spring motion it's irreplaceable it works so good so big shout out to Kitch Bent uh, you know, again, this is not paid for at all. I just love their product. Uh, their parts work phenomenal for this rebuild, and it works exactly how it's supposed to, to rebuild these controllers to original spec, how they're meant to be played. So, now that we have Nintendo cocaine all over my desk, as you can still see, I'm going to clean it up after I'm done, we're going to take the mechanical control stick that's been rebuilt, drop it into the spot, do the three screws first before you plug it in. So get those three little ones. They're probably silver. And screw those into the controller. Don't over torque them. Just get them so they're snug. I've seen, uh, con unfortunately, I've seen controllers break. Hey, Ice Beams, welcome to the stream. And again, I will note all these screws on this controller, uh, on an OEM controller, are Phillips. It is a weird thing. They're not tri-wing. I don't understand how that got away with that on 64, but it's not tri-wing. It's Phillips. Um, so now that the three screws are in for the control stick, reverse process. You get to plug in the controller, uh, control stick into the controller now, which is the coolest thing. You don't need to desolder it. I love that. Uh, but it's easier when it's screwed in to unplug and plug in that. Uh, control stick module. Then take the Z button and sneak it back into its little clamp and make sure you have the button pad with it in the correct spot otherwise it'll fall out. So now your Z button will work again. It's nice and easy and chills in there which is cool. So now that that's all together make your your L and R don't fall out. How many average views do you have? I honestly don't know. I Like I said before, I have been a bad streamer. I have not been streaming enough. So I can't give you a solid answer on that. <laughs> you need an average if you stream enough. Um, but um, I'm coming back. I'm going to try to stream more. Uh, now that everything is done in terms of controllers, uh, the control 60 rebuilt, 
Z button's back in place and the control, the actual plug is back in place. Make sure you got your three screws there. We can take the upper part and lower as straight as possible back onto the controller because it has a ton of poles that need to be lined up and then the L and R have to line up too. And then if you, as long as you do that, everything is back together. Just pinch it together and get one screw started. Just get one. Uh, that way you don't have it falling apart on you. I usually go for a middle one. That way it holds the whole controller together. Okay. And now I don't have to worry about it all falling apart, which is really cool. And after all this, this controller would have a nice fresh rebuild. I'll show you how it looks, and it's amazing. Let's pop some of these screws in here. Now this is, I already have all my controllers done, so this controller here is for one of my bundles that I have for sale. So this will be another happy controller for someone. And they get to experience how the 64 is meant to be played. Let's see. Oh, and you didn't add Jet World Streamers United Communities. Oh, shit. Uh, thank you for reminding me. I gotta do that. I'm in my um, uh, Streamlabs OBS. I wasn't on the site yet. I gotta, I gotta do that still. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, uh, no, I just didn't do it. <laughs> I know it doesn't save sometimes, but I actually didn't didn't get to do it yet. All right. This part is actually the shittiest part of all of this. Um, all right, so we have the controller well. You can actually see it right there. See the light shining over those two holes in there. Uh, we have to get this little screw down in and get it in the hole in there without messing it up or dropping it, whatever. And then tighten it. Okay, we got one. Yeah, I, I know, I know. Hold on. Yeah, before I even finish that screw, let me let me do that so I don't get in trouble. Because I know uh, some things they're like picky about that or like yeah, you're in the wrong community. Blah, blah, blah. Oh shit! Did you just close out all my? Yo, fuck you, Firefox! You just close out all my tabs on me. Now I have to go through all my history and renew all my. Oh, fuck you! That's what I get for restarting my computer before. I go through all my history and get my tabs back that I needed saved. All right, let's just go in here for now. I'm sorry, peeps. Hold on one sec. Go into my channel, we'll fix my stuff. Let's see, what do I have? My <laughs> simulation game's on still. Uh, I was playing um, Jurassic Park. What is. Jet World Streamers United? Streamers United. Got it. Got it. All fixed. Uh, I don't think I have to follow it. I think you speak lies. Because I just got it to work. Let's make sure I'm following you anyway. Yeah, let's put it in follow. Okay. All fixed. Okay. Uh, what was that? How do you pronounce that? Ger. Was it Grassi? Gray. Gra 33Z. Is it Grazy? I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, anyways, now that that's fixed, uh, we have one screw left. So, that was my excuse. I didn't finish the controller until I fixed that. Uh, 
Okay. Alright, so I believe that was nine screws, was that? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, nine screws total. Now, a little pro tip on tightening these all together is, uh, by the way, uh, Grazy, uh, you are at the end of my little rebuild here, but I will have everything described real quick. Uh, do not over tighten the upper screws. I've noticed if you over tighten the upper screws, the shoulder buttons do not like to pivot too well. So now these ones work not too bad. They actually go to back to place. If you tighten them really tight, the shell clamps down on them and does not like to let go, which sucks because then that defeats the purpose of the button. Um, but now we have this controller that we can try to rock around and it has very minimal movement. It moves, springs back, and it works wonderful now. So now we have a nice, fresh, rebuilt 64 controller that only took, what? How long have we been live? I've probably been BSing and I'm messing with some other stuff too, and we're under an hour to do one controller. And you have a fresh built controller, while I've also been doing other stuff. And I actually see the residue on this controller that I need to clean off still. This was a controller I picked up for four bucks in Goodwill. Had a busted stick in there pretty much, it's all loose and wobbly. Had some extra spare parts, which again, order from Kitchbent which look like such. Uh, since you're coming in late, Grazy, I can show you this. Um, it's a brand new mechanical bowl. There are two gears. You have the small gear, large gear, and a fresh control stick, all for really cheap, and fixes your controller to work exactly how they're supposed to be. Let's see, I hear st you stream some retro stuff. Yes, I absolutely love retro stuff. That's a big, big thing with me. Um, I, ha I stream 64, Super Nintendo, NES, PlayStation, PlayStation 2, um, what, Dreamcast, Genesis, oh, I'm trying to stream Genesis, I'm having some issues with the Genesis right now, uh, because it streams in black and white, uh, I won't get into the science of why it does it, but I'm trying to resolve the issue, um, but yeah, I love retro stuff, this is one of my tech streams, uh, this I will have this uploaded later if you want to catch the actual full uh, stream uh, since I just am wrapping up now on the rebuild of the 64 controller of what you need to do, what you recommend for and whatnot. Uh, so if you want to rewatch this, I'll have it uploaded. Um, but yeah, this is very, very cheap to do too if you're doing this yourself. Uh, this, I think it's ballpark per controller, maybe a couple bucks tops. Uh, I think, like again, I said earlier, I think it was either like 20 or 30 bucks shipped for uh, 10 sets of gears, control sticks, and fresh bowls. And I already, now that's my eighth one I rebuilt. I still have two left here to do. I'll do that another time. But yeah, that, that gives you an idea of how cheap it is uh, to do a mechanical control stick rebuild. And it makes these controllers that much better to save because the mechanical ones are how they're designed. They're superior. And I don't recommend getting an analog stick like the, the um, I'm not sorry, not analog. These are analog. The digital stick, uh, if you can avoid it. Though there are, I've heard the di the digital one with a GameCube stick is not that bad, but it still has the sensitivity issue. All right. So, anyone who has joined in uh, for this episode here, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to try to cut this one here so I can upload it nicely so everyone can, uh, can enjoy the 64 rebuild. So, give me one sec, I'm going to cut that now.